Hey friends, how's it going? My name's Miriam and I'm a poet and I'm sitting in an armchair, ta-da, hence the armchair poet. Now I wanted to share with you a piece today that uh, packs a lot of history into it. It was written, the poem, probably about five years ago, but it was written about a visit uh, that I did to a place in Syria about 10, mm, 15 years ago, quite a while ago. And that place in Syria was built many hundreds of years ago, possibly even a thousand, I'd have to check. Anyway, so there's a lot of history packed into this. Uh, and it's written about a country that I have a lot of love for, Syria, and where I lived for several years. Um, and well, I'll just read it and you can enjoy it and let me know what you think. It's in my second book, Weight of Hope, and it's called Better Than Simeon Stylitis. And it goes like this. There is a place in Syria where big dogs lie dozing amongst the olive trees and ruins, watching lazily as tourists wander past in dribs and drabs through the years held in stone around them. There is a place in Syria past the big dogs dozing where stones nestle in the ground or stretch up to knee height Relics of the tall and noble church buildings they once were. Faith in their old bones and prayer in the ground. There is a place in Syria past the skeletons of old stone churches resting in the summer sun, where a pillar stands, squat and waist high, once many meters tall, but now worn down by the reverent strokes and chippings of the faithful and the not so. And on this squat stone pillar, back in its majestic heyday, when songs of the faithful filled the air, on this stone pillar there sat a man. And they called him Simeon, Simeon Stylitis, for the towering pillar that held him. Whence he sent up the ascetic's prayer, far away from the hustle of the world, far below him. Up there where he sought to hear God clearer, and to resist the world's urge to own him. And they say he was a holy man. That's nice. And perhaps while on high, he unwound the world, and that's nice too. But the what of the masses, the wandering masses who pilgrimed below seeking truth? Was his conviction any good to them? But I never felt like you stayed atop a pillar, my dear boy. For we both hold such different worldviews that the temptation could well be there to sit atop our towers and shout platitudes across to each other. But you were always quick to leap nimbly down from your pillar and sprint across the ground towards me, as protective and caring as ever. And we would go on one of our rambles through the olive groves together. And we have walked through a great many groves in the years of our shared existence. Hunting the casings of old shotgun cartridges in sun-dappled, pine-smelling, needle-floored woods and in bustly, hustly urban jungle full of dust and smells and vigorous voices. Through the cold-edged air and snowy ground of the damp and pensive forest. And across the humming, buzzing cello sands of the distant desert. And now, the sickly sweet in rain and heat, eucalyptus smelling bush. But through all of these, our wonders through towns and trees, you never cease to teach me about kindness and loyalty, conviction and belief and thoughtfulness in life and love. Even that then would have been enough, but I find myself further blessed to also be your friend. Chuckling at absurd jokes and making me laugh in every situation and whistling until I can't for giggling all through the years, adventuring and caring and sharing our story in a way that no one else can. And our pillars can seem to grow taller through the years. And some days I worry for the distance between, but always you are there, leaping nimbly down the stone and sprinting over to meet me wherever I happen to be, scrambling awkwardly down a pillar of my own. Always you are there, often before I know I need you, concerned, caring, protective and thoughtful. And man, do I love you.
buckets. Thanks. And that's the end of that piece. Someone once asked me what my favorite piece of poetry was that I'd ever written. And I couldn't really answer because it depends on the day. Any given day it changes. But when they then asked me what piece I was most proud of, I thought of that one. Um, both because I'm proud of the poem and because I have a lot of love for the countries about which it's written. Uh, but perhaps most of all because I'm proud of the person that it was written for. I wonder who your people are who wander through life with you, who journey through towns and trees, who tell you who you are and help you to remember it. But I hope that no matter how many of these people you have, whether it's one or a manifold, or perhaps you're looking for someone to journey through life with, I hope you know that you are fully seen and fully known and fully loved. Don't forget it. I'll chat to you next time. Bye.